Happy Easter, everyone. Warm weather, sometimes Easter turns out to be cool, but in many cases, after that. Uh, we've got several folks that's out congregationally, and I'm sure it's affected our last as well. Uh, at last to leave was just week, a good crew that went up there, and they'll be in route back home this morning or sometime today. So we hope they're going to have a a safe journey home. And I hope you've had a, a good uh, good morning and kicking off a new week here. So don't really have anything to add to the announcements other than we do have a birthday this week. It's not on your announcements because the announcements still have the March birthdays. The Lacey celebrates a birthday on, uh, on Friday, so Happy birthday to her. So, what are other things that we need to make mention of this morning? Why are you single? Having a Louisiana visiting family. Well, speaking of being in a Louisiana visiting family, uh, Alan is down there uh, as well. And uh, his father is is not doing well. We know he's under hospice care, and so uh, he went down there the other night. So, Lacey shares a birthday with somebody I'm sitting beside him. What? She, she just got your birthday, too? <laughs> That's right. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> Both of you are turning 29, I'm yeah. sure, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't see that. I'm sorry for overlooking that. Anything else this morning? Need to make mention of. Y'all are a quiet bunch. Today's class is going to be a question and answer class. I'm going to ask the questions and y'all answer. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're ready. Right? You didn't send out that in the email. <laughs> <laughs> You and I would have been the only one here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good for us to be together. Today is a day that uh, one of two days in which a lot of the world thinks about the Lord and attendance on the churches are heavy today and, and Christmas. And so my attitude about that is if you can just get them here twice a year, let's be thankful for that. So uh, that's... That's a good thing. Looking forward to Charles preaching today in the absence of Carrie and Jordan, both with our with our group mm -hmm. in, uh, at uh, Nashville, West Leach. Our first visit to the Church of Christ was on Easter. Was it really? In Whitson Place. Bill Wheeler invited us, and Adrian's sister was a Church of Christ, and she came down. To help with our parents, and um, we got ready and went over there. Bill Wheeler. Uh -huh. But How about that? it was cold, and <laughs> Rand we just had one child in, uh, Randall. Yeah. And we give him his Easter basket that morning. Well, he wanted to take it to church and all this, and I wouldn't let him, but I did let him have some chocolate candy. Uh, eggs to put in his pocket. <laughs> okay, it was cold. And um, I can't remember that elder's name, but it was uh, Sheila Alred's daddy. I can't remember his name, but anyway, he he was there and he was, and we sat close to Peter. And those chocolate eggs melted, and I had chocolate eggs in my hand. That's funny. <laughs> Howard Holly might have been the. Was that him? Uh, Howard yeah. Holly. Yeah. Yeah, the elder. Yeah, Howard Holly. I, I couldn't remember his name. Very good. And uh, oh. I am not take up much time, but. <laughs> we love, we love the stories. Yeah. Well, well, so we, he, he's a church Christ preacher. He he got married at Central 
and Mr. Holly was there, and he uh, he was fooling with his hands. And during the ceremony, his he he dropped his wedding ring, and it rolled right down <laughs> to the cross. <laughs> Let's open our class for prayer. Okay. <laughs> oh God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you this morning. We look forward to the Lord's Day and our being together as your people here. We're thankful for that this morning. We're especially thankful for those that's here in our class, and we pray your blessings on our study this morning. And we thank you, oh God, for what today represents to the world. Yea, that we celebrate every Sunday, and that is the resurrection of our Lord. We know that all things are possible through Him, and every good gift comes from you through Him. For that we're thankful, and we pray this in His name. Amen. Class, if you want to open your Bibles to the first chapter of Philippians, that's where we begin our study this morning. As we continue this look at this great encouraging book it's written to the first church that was established on European soil we talked about that establishment here in our introductory lessons for a while uh, we are in the latter the last paragraph of the first chapter if I were dividing this this up, I would have put this paragraph over in chapter 2 because I think verses 27 through 30 and verses 1 through 4 of chapter 2 belong together. We'll do our very best today to, uh, uh, to cover those two paragraphs, okay? Our, our lesson here, y'all come in, have a seat, good to see you. Our, our lesson here from the book of Philippians has been entitled of How to Live the Christian Life, which is what you see on the board here. And so uh, we talked about prayer. We talked about preaching and proclaiming the Word. Last week we talked about verses 19 through 26, a great paragraph in uh, helping us to, to, to talk about spiritual maturity, how we grow and mature in Christ. But the lesson topic, how to live the Christian life, will very much be uh, the focus of today's uh, class, beginning in verse 27. So we're in Philippians chapter 1, down in verse 27 is where we'll begin today. Let's read this, this paragraph here. We'll save chapter 2 and, uh, until we get to it, but uh, beginning in verse 27. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation and that from God. For to you had it, it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here in me. So we begin this, this paragraph here in this, this uh, section, verse 27, with this statement. Only let your conduct be worthy. We'll continue that thought here in just a moment. But uh, conduct, some of the older versions says let your conversation be, uh, be worthy. And I, I want to hear from some others, and I, uh, in particular, I want to hear from someone with a Christian standard Bible. I know Lacey's got one. Hold the thought just, just for a moment. And I also want one from the ESV. We're going to look at those two uh, renderings. But the word conduct, no offense, Brian, to what I'm about to say, but the word conduct, you'll see why when I, when I say it. The word conduct here in the in the Greek, if we put it on the board, everybody in here would see that our word politics come from that. Now the reason I said no offense is because usually when we think of the word politics, it's oftentimes it's not in a good in a, in a good way. Okay. We're thankful that we've got a, a good politician in our class here. 
So anyway, the word politics, or, or, or the word conduct that, that we would be reminded of politics, simply means to be a citizen. Now if you look over to chapter 4, you'll find the, uh, no, it's up in chapter 3. Look at chapter 3 in verse 20, and you'll find that, that idea where it says, For our citizenship is in heaven. Well, now that really plays into what we talked about last week back up here in verse 23 of chapter 1. Remember when we talked about that, that our life here on earth is temporary and, and uh, the, the language in verse 23 says, Paul says, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ. And that idea of depart, folding a tent. I'm through with my temporary camping experience as it were. And I fold the tent and I'm ready to go into my eternal abode, which we see in verse 20 of chapter 3. So our citizenship is in heaven. But that's the same word here that's rooted in this idea of let your conduct, your citizenship. Now let me hear from that Christian standard Bible. Mine says live your life worthy. Live your life worthy. All right, that's not that's that's not the one I was looking for. ESV says ESV. Uh, let your manner of life. Okay, manner of life. Okay, the the, the, the Christian Standard Bible that, that I was looking at says something about citizens, citizens. At, at, let, let your citizenship. And and Brian here has even got a better one. Let's hear it again. Let your manner of life. Let your manner of life here. So. These are powerful thoughts here. Let your manner of life be worthy of what? Of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, let me point this out before we, before we go on. The tense and the mood of this is very important. The tense of it is present tense. What does that tell us? Let your conduct, let your conduct be worthy. Let your manner of life be worthy. What is the fact that it's present tense? What does that imply? Continuing. It's continuing, okay? Your manner of life on Sunday morning better be the same as it is on Tuesday night or on Saturday afternoon or whatever. It's, it's continual. See, that's just your manner of life. Now, the mood is also important here because the mood is imperative. We don't talk about this as much, but the imperative mood is not a suggestion. Paul is not saying, I hope you'll do this, or, or I wish you would do this. The imperative move means that it's a command. It's imperative that they do it. So you've got, right to start with on this paragraph, you've got let your conduct, let your manner of life. He's commanding you. He's making a command that it, all the time your manner of life should be worthy. So here's the, here's the deal I want, I want to emphasize to start with. This is a powerful thought right here. We're not going to spend much time on it. We're going to move on. But I don't want it to, I don't want, I don't want us to lose this idea. The very first thing here that we read about is to let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel. Now, what do we take from that? We take that all the time. All the time. People are looking at us. And we and 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 some people don't read the Bible. Some people don't know anything about the church. Some people don't know anything about Christ, but they're seeing that through us. That's a powerful thought for us to, for us to consider as we begin. So in particular now, here's, here's what I want us to, to really dwell on. And this is what ties the first paragraph of chapter 2 and the last paragraph of chapter 1 together. Is unity. Okay, so... What about this manner of life? What about what about this? Well, I want you to mark some things here in uh, at, at verse 27. By the way, <clears throat> I hadn't mentioned this in a while, so when I look at my Bible here, I've, I've got I've got it marked up pretty pretty much, and I've got it marked in all different colors. Okay. So as many things as I tell you to underline this, circle this, note this in your Bible. If you've got all of the same color, you might, a year from now, when you go back in there, it might not be as easy to, to, to follow. So this is what I do. And these are the pens that I've suggested in years past. Look at Kim. She's got all the colors. And she's got all the colors, okay? <laughs> Some of you are huge to my, this discussion. 
This this pen right here is called the Pigma Micron. We couldn't hear. I'm sorry. Pigma. P i g m a is the name of the pen, and it's if you're gonna buy one to mark in your Bible, see it doesn't bleed through. All right, and it'll hold up over time. And if you're gonna buy one, buy the point oh oh five version. Not the point oh five. That's too fat. Point oh oh five. <laughs> Is the one that you can you can you can draw in your Bible and mark in your Bible. And now I use different colors so that when I'm in one section here, all my red will be about one point and all my blue will be about another point like that. Now, if you want to do that, do it. If not, I take no offense to that. All right. So let's let's mark a little bit right here. All right. So I want to mark three things in verse twenty-seven. Underline one spirit, put a little one beside that, one mind, put a little two beside that, and striving together, and put a three beside that. Now, what do we have? What, is, what about this manner of life that, that Paul's talking about here? What, what all is involved in that? Well, he tells you, he said, I want you to stand fast. Well, let's stop before we look at one, two, and three. To stand fast. Somebody have a different different reading of that. Standing, uh, standing, standing firm. firm. I wanted to hear that because that emphasizes again the idea that is present tense. Standing firm, ongoing, all the time. So standing firm. You might want to. I don't want to take class time to do this today, but sometime go back and read Psalm seventy three. Mm -hmm. Most of the Psalms, in fast, no, not most of them. Exactly half of them are written by David. So, 75 Psalms that are written by David. You've got 75 that's not. Psalm 73 is one of those that's not. It's written by Asa. And Asa begins that psalm by saying, I almost slipped. I almost stumbled. And so, he goes on and talks about what caused him to do that. He was looking around at other people and how they prospered and whatnot. And it almost caused him to lose his faith. Now, the good news is later in the psalm, he says what saved him and, and what drew him back. Uh, Heath, you had a comment. Uh, can you say what that in Psalm 73? Asa. A-S-A-P-H. Asa. It's a psalm of Asa there. And it's, it's a great study. I think we've studied that in years past. But the reason I say that is because that's what I think of here when I'm talking, thinking about standing firm. Be firmly planted here. And then there's three ideas that we, we know get here. One of them is is uh, is in one <coughs> spirit. Now, some does anybody in here have a, a NIV version? Got uh, one purpose. I'm looking for an NIV version. I okay, tell me how, tell me what it says for one spirit. What verse? I, I'm, I'm looking at verse 27. Okay. Mine says, verse 27 says, one spirit. For I'm in the one spirit. In one spirit. Is spirit capitalized? Yes. Okay. That was the point I was looking for. I thought the NIV had the one spirit. It does say the one spirit. Ah, it does. Okay. That's the only version that I know of that's inserted the article the. And it also capitalized spirit. It's the only version I know of that does that. All the rest of them has one spirit with little s and so let's 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 follow the majority rule here and, and uh, when we talk about that what are we talking about when we talk about one spirit what is our spirit what does james say about the spirit as it as it relates to the body as it relates to death what does james say about that for the body without what Spirit is dead. Spirit is what? Dead. dead. Okay. So we talk about a body and a spirit. See, okay. we are made up, we really are a dual being. We have a physical body and we have a spirit. That's the spirit that's being referenced right here. And incidentally, if I think about how to say this so I don't, so I don't get it wrong, we are not a body with a spirit. We are a spirit with a body. Mm -hmm. Think about that just a little bit, see? Because 
what you see right here is not really Glen. This is just that tent. This is just this earthly tabernacle. This is just my temporary abode. But Glen, the spirit, that part that you don't see, is my eternal uh, being. So I, I, I want you to just think about the fact that you're not a body with a spirit. You're a spirit with a body. Well, and I've shared this before, but um, when Clay Holder and I used to teach, when I first got here, we were teaching like fourth, fifth grade kids. <clears throat> one of the most profound things, this is before Owen was born, I think we might have been pregnant with him, one of the most profound things anybody has ever said to me was that he told me when he and Shelly were pregnant with Jacob, their first child, that one of the elders at Livingston, where they were living and going to school, sat him down one day, they didn't really know each other that well, he sat him down one day, was talking to him, and he said, Clay, you're about to have, you know, you're about to have a, a son. He said, and you need, to, somebody, you, somebody, you need to hear somebody tell you that you and Shelly have created a soul that will live forever. And it's your responsibility to put him in position to spend eternity with his heavenly father. That is a powerful thought, isn't it? Eternity. Hey, Glenn. Yes. Did you happen to look at the blue letter Bible of the spirit that you're talking about? Uh, is that Numa? Yes. So it, it talks about it being the third person of God. The third person well, of God. Well, okay, person. okay. Um, I think that the translators of the majority of, of the Bible is the Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. But the fact that the article V is left out of this okay. probably differentiates it or di distinguishes it not being the third person of the Godhead. It's talking about the Spirit that's common to us. That's the, that's the way I take it now. Don't try to don't try to make too much of a differentiation between all three of these things that you 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 noted here because they're all three going to be kind of hand in hand. The first one is one spirit. The second one is one mind. Now, if you looked, Terry mentioned the Blue Letter Bible. If you looked at the Greek Bible for the word mind, <coughs> this is what it would say: uh, P S Y C H E. Now in English, we would say that. What, what's that, what's that word? Psyche. Psyche. Okay. The Greeks called it suke. P-S-U-C-H-E is how the Greek rendering of that is some, sometimes. But it's the, the Greeks looked at this as being the seat of emotions. So you've got the mind, you've got the spirit you, that we talked about earlier. You've got, the, you've got the mind being the seat of the emotions. You've got the intellect. Intellect being involved in that, and all of it being together, like like us. When I would say that we are of one mind or of one spirit here, what I'm saying is that we we have agreement here with the way that we feel, our emotions. We have agreement with the way that we think, our intellect, and then follow that up with the third one down here. The third one is striving together. Now, the, the Greek word that's translated here, if I put it on the board, you would immediately see the word athlete. It's like an athletic term. As a matter of fact, it's found <coughs> over in chapter 4, down in verse 3, when it says, I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored. There's the idea. So striving together, I want you to think about unity here as far as having um, one spirit and one mind striving together. So think about, think about this. Think about basketball game that was on TV last night. Mm -hmm. Playing together. Or think about maybe a better <laughs> rendering here would be tug of war. If we're all on one side here and all, we're all of us pulling together, that's the idea of striving together. You're not pulling against one another, but striving, uh, striving together. So, now, what's the object for all of these? Because all of them, again, don't try to make a difference with all of them. They're all basically saying the same thing. With one mind, with one spirit, striving together, all of that. For what reason? Finish the verse. Now, I want you to note something here. The article V was not before spirit, but it is before faith, 
and he is before gospel. In the original Greek, you do have that you do have that article. So what do we say? Well, we need to be of one spirit, we need to be of one mind, we need to be striving together. For what reason? For the faith of your choice. Is that what we is that what we have? Well, you make your own decision. What are you thinking? Uh uh. It says for the faith of the gospel. And that definite article there, you you believe whatever you want to. You believe you have faith in whatever you want to. But in the end, what's going to mean the difference, Bobby, in your eternal salvation is the fact that you, you're standing with one spirit and one mind and striving together for the faith of the gospel. Let's move on. And not in any way terrified. Hey, yes ma'am. Um, I just noticed in the NIV there's a little, you know, note at the bottom. And it does say, where it says in the verse, in the one spirit. At the bottom it says, or in one spirit. So it, the NIV like does Christ. give you a marginal rendering here that it could be, yeah. it could be either way. Okay, so let's go ahead with verse 28. There's an interesting word here that I think. Okay, so when we're standing together, we're all standing together with one spirit, one mind, and striving together, pulling together, pulling in the same direction for the faith of the gospel, not in any way terrified by your adversaries. The word terrified there, if you've ever been around horses, the word terrified there is like a horse that's been startled. If you've ever been around horses, you've got a huge animal with a lot of strength right here, and they get startled, and what do they do? They're going to run over whatever's in their way. Okay. What Paul is saying here is as you stand together, as we pull together with one faith and one mind and striving together, don't be terrified by your adversaries. No, no. Uh, that's, that's, that's actually assuring you of your gospel. Uh, of your salvation. Verse 29, For to you it had been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. Mark two things here in verse 29. One is to believe in him, and the other is to suffer for him. You got two ideas, to believe and to suffer. They go hand in hand, folks. Because 2 Timothy 3.12 tells us that all that live godly in Christ Jesus, you finish it. What does it say? Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall what? Suffer what? Persecution. So those two, those two ideas go hand in hand. And then we have uh, we have uh, Paul in verse thirty saying that basically, I'm, I'm follow my example. Where's Paul? Where's Paul when he's writing? He's in prison. He's in chains. And he says, that awaits you as a Christian. That scares me sometimes. <clears throat> that scares me sometimes because I don't know about you, I have never suffered a whole lot for my faith. I've been called a Campbellite. We talked about that before. I've been ridiculed a little bit, but to say I've, I've been persecuted because of my faith, and that text says, All that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That interesting thought there. Okay, so let me go to the PowerPoint here. So, unity. <clears throat> unity. Now, remember, I told you before that there seems to be the Philippians is a love letter. Paul loved that congregation. And the theme of Philippians is joy. But there seems to be some problems in the congregation and he addresses it very very um, gently unity unity he's probably addressing the fact that some of them are not I know you Odious and Syndicate later in the, in the book I know those two women were having a problem but here's what we read in verses 27 through 30 he says the plea to live right worthy of the gospel knowing that such will bring persecution don't run from it. Expect it. Rejoice in it when, it when it happens. It's confirming the fact that you're in the faith. 
And Paul refers to himself as an example. One more thing I want to share with that is this. And I put it in bold here. I didn't want to over I didn't want to forget to make this this point. In times of difficulty, it's all the more important that we stand united that we support one another, that we have one spirit, that we strive together with one mind because Satan's greatest tool or one of the greatest tools is division. Yeah. And congregations sometimes get caught up in that. And there'll be a little group over here and there'll be a little group over here and and, uh, and I know that you all don't always agree with the decisions that the elders make. But unless it's something that violates doctrine, at the end of the day, elders make decisions based on judgment. And they make decisions on what they think is in the best interest of the congregation as a whole. And so I would plead for you, if it's not a doctrinal issue, whether it's elders making the decision or whether it's something else going on in the congregation. Division is, is, a, uh, is, a, is a great tool uh, of the devil. Okay, any comments on chapter 1 before we leave there? Let's move right on through. Chapter 2 begins with the word therefore. When you see the word therefore in the Bible, ask yourself what's it there for? Because it usually is, is referring to some making some kind of conclusion to some points that have already been made. And that's the case here. We've got unity. We've got Paul urging them to, to be of one spirit and one mind. And then in verse 2, uh, chapter 2, he says, Therefore, we'll talk about that. About seven years ago, we had a study in this class of the wonderful chapter 2s. Raise your hand for your part of the study. The wonderful chapter twos. And it was a play on the fact that sometimes little folks when they're two years old are referred to as the terrible twos. Mm -hmm. Well, that study was not the terrible twos. It was the wonderful twos. And it was a study of the great chapter twos of the Bible. Fantastic. Great collection. Amazing at Daniel 2, and Joel 2, and uh, and uh, Isaiah 2 and Acts 2 and certainly belonging on that group is Philippians 2. This is a powerful, powerful um, chapter here and so I, I can't wait to get to verses 5 through 11 perhaps next week. But let's, let's talk about let's talk about um, let's talk about uh, verses 1 through 4 here and I'm going to ask you to mark I want to use different color pens on some of this if, if you need to, but let's let's mark our Bible here. First of all, I want you to circle the word if found in verse 9. He says, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of, of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy. Circle the word if. So it's called doubting when he says this, it's, it, it, it's, does Paul have doubt here, or how is he saying that? The analogy would be a, a grown man saying, if I'm anything, I'm a man. I didn't catch that when you said it first, <laughs> but now I do. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of what he said in John chapter 14 remember when Jesus said to the disciples he said if I go away and prepare a place for you I'll come again and receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also when Jesus says if I go away was he saying I might not mm -mm. and that's the same thing right here he, he's saying since since there's consolation in Christ since there's comfort of, of love so uh, we're going to do that all right, now I want you to circle, maybe with a different color, I want you to circle in the first three verses, I want you to circle the word mind. And in verse 2, he says, Fulfill my joy being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. 
let that be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. And you might want to even carry that on down to verse 5 when it says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ. So circle that. Now we'll come back and talk, talk about that in a minute, but you have to see in circling all those words of mind, you have to see how this ties back to what we just talked about in verse 27, being like-minded. Verse 2, you might want to also note the multiple uses of, of like, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. So like-minded, same love, one accord, one mind. All of this is painting a picture of unity. All right, Paul. So you're talking about unity. You're talking about us being, not being divided. You're talking about being of one mind and so forth. Paint me a picture, Paul. Tell me what that really means. Verse 3, he says, well, I'm going to tell you what it doesn't mean. And look at what we see in verse 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. Think about those two terms, selfish ambition and conceit. What's another term that you would throw in there with that? Pride. Somebody say it. Pride. Pride. Owen's got it. That's exactly what I was wanting. Pride. Selfish ambition. Uh, conceit and pride. And Paul is saying that's, in, that's the antithesis, if you will, of being united. Why? Because we can't be united if I've got if I've got an attitude of it's my way or the highway. I know this will surprise y'all probably. <laughs> but when I was a principal, sometimes I had to have that attitude. You know, this is the way we're gonna do it. And it's my way or the highway. I had that but, same principle. <laughs> did you? I did. Mm. <laughs> Well, I, sometimes I would even have to get to the point, Brian, where I would say, Highway 69 runs north and south out there. Get on it and go north or south. Because if you stay here, this is how it's going to be done. Well, that works in the workplace. Maybe it doesn't even work in the workplace. I don't know. But uh, it doesn't work with our spiritual life. Let nothing be done through selfishness Selfish ambition or conceit, but all right. Let's let's mark some more things here. I'm gonna put this on the overhead. If you want to mark, let's mark some more things in in uh, in here. <coughs> number one, lowliness of mind. Underline that. Put a number one beside it. Number two, esteem others better than self. Underline that, put a two beside that. Uh, number three, look out for the interests of others. Underline that, put a three beside that. And again, going down into verse five, which is the next paragraph, which was also in Christ Jesus. Underline that, put a four. So how, how do we live the Christian life? That's what Philippians is telling us. How do we live the Christian life? One of Satan's greatest tools is division. So Paul is urging us to be united. Well, unity here cannot exist if we are selfish, if we're arrogant, if we're prideful, if we have the attitude of it's my way or the highway. Unity can't exist in that in that environment. Pete? Uh, why talk about Division, now Satan works. I think of, you have to correct me if I'm wrong, the Bible says that God's not the author of confusion. That's true. So Satan has to do Right? Yes. Deception, tricks, and confusion. That's the way he does it. Pete's one of the, one of the scariest version, uh, verses in, in the Bible to me. It's the verse that, and I can't not tell you in Corinthians exactly where it is, but it says that, that um, the angels, Satan's angels, have the ability to transform themselves into angels of light. Talking about deception? Yes, sir. That's it. It is. That's it, see? 
So they, they have the ability to, sometimes wrong has the ability to, to, to paint itself in, in a good light and look good. And we have to be grounded in the faith, the students of this word enough to differentiate that when it, when it happens. That scares me. Yeah, this is angels, you know, would be, I know, I guess the ones that fail or Lucifer and the not experience. And I am talking to some people, and they don't believe it. People go to church and don't believe in the mock spirits. They think that when Christ died, they went away. But then they cast out spirits after Christ died. He did. Yeah. The, the, the disciples, the apostles, with miraculous gifts had to be able to do that. So they're still here today, but the spirits. They might not be in exactly the same way, but they're still here, aren't they? They are. That, that's, that's true. Um, I have another couple of things I want to say about verses 1 through 4, but it'll be very brief next week, and we'll get, we'll get into this, this paragraph. Verses 5 through 11 may be one of the great paragraphs in all of the Bible, especially if you're talking about the uh, pre-incarnation of Christ. Christ before he came to the earth. Christ did not begin in the manger people. Christ was part of the, the creation and was from the, the beginning. And so we can talk about that in, in, in uh, verses 5 through 11. Comments before you leave? I have Easter. Hope you enjoy the day. Thank y'all for being here. Thank you for being here. In there, the